Amen. Amen. Good afternoon. Good evening, my brothers and my sisters. I pray that you are with me on this day the Lord uh, has made, and I thank God for each one of you. Uh, I want you to recognize and realize that this is a, a great day to be alive. Our God is awesome. Our God is amazing. Our God is alive, and our God just keeps on blessing us. Thank you all for being patient today. We've had uh, a few uh, technical glitches, uh, but that's a part of, uh, of going live. That's a part of, of uh, this uh, particular period we live in, and we just thank God for the opportunity to connect even when we can connect. And so I thank God for, for those of you that may have been with me earlier, and I thank God for those of you uh, that are with me now. And so I just want to I just want to make sure that, that, that God's word goes forth and we don't allow any technical difficulties. We don't allow anything else to, to keep us uh, from getting God's word. So thank you for being patient today. Thank you for loving God. That's one of the virtues of the Holy Spirit is being patient. Amen. So, so let's pray. God, we thank you now for who you are and what you are. And we thank you, O oh God, for the opportunity to, to grow in your word, to go in your word, to learn your word and then to live your word. What we recognize, O oh God, is that your word is a lamp. Your word is a light. Your word is what we need. So thank you, O oh God, for your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I welcome all of you who join us on YouTube, all of you who join us on uh, Periscope, all of you who join us on Facebook Live. No matter how you're joining us, I give God praise and thanksgiving uh, for you. And listen, my beloved, I love you so much that I cannot help but emphasize, please make sure you do those things you can to remain safe during this global pandemic. Make sure you're wearing your mask. Make sure you're washing your hands frequently. Make sure you are keeping a safe social distance. And then make sure that you are praying for our world. Remember, Jesus encouraged us to pray without ceasing. And so I'm thankful for all of you. And then don't forget those of you who can and will, I encourage you, I continue to encourage you, please make sure you prayerfully consider uh, taking the COVID-19 vaccine. My brothers and my sisters, there are institutions and organizations all across our community now who are providing opportunities free of charge for those 65 and older and those who are caregivers for those 65 and older to take this vaccine. And so I'm absolutely encouraging you to pray about it. If you want, you can even call me and we can talk about it. But I want to do everything I can to make sure that we do all that we can to stem this tide of this pandemic. My brothers and my sisters, we are approaching. Uh, oh, and let me mention this to you. I'm excited that we're going to continue to serve our community uh, as much as we can. And one of the ways we'll, we'll serve our community is to bless those around us with food to eat. And so my brothers and sisters, on Saturday, Feb February 27th, from 9 to 12 at our teen center, I'm excited about us giving out groceries or bags of blessings, if you will, to all that will come by. We're going to do it in a COVID-safe manner so you don't have to roll your window down. You don't have to get out of your vehicle. All you've got to do is drive up to our teen center at 1601 Whitaker Street between 9 and 12 on Saturday, February 27th, and we will bless you with a bag of groceries. So please share the word, spread the word, uh, take heed of the word, and come by and get your blessing on Saturday, February 27th. I thank God for all of those in our faith community who continue to recognize we are blessed, hallelujah, to be a blessing. And so my brothers and my sisters, uh, I want to also remind you that tomorrow begins Lenten season. Tomorrow begins that 40-day journey to Resurrection Sunday. Tomorrow begins that time when, when we spend some time in renewal and we spend some time in refreshment of in the presence of God. We 
focus on our God. We pray to strengthen our faith in God. We even spend some time fasting to our God. And so there is the Zoom address on your screen. I want to make sure that you get that. Make sure you copy that. You can go to our website as well and get that Zoom address. But there may be some of you all today who are not able to, 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 get, uh, to, get, to join us via Zoom. And so you can call in on one 646 558 8656. You don't have to just necessarily be in front of a computer. Uh, if you're driving to work or on your way to work or at work, you can call for just five to eight minutes of devotion tomorrow morning at 730. 1646 558 8656 or via Zoom. My brothers and my sisters, uh, as we were, as I was praying about Bible study today, as I was praying about, you know, what is important to us as we approach this season of Lent? What is important to us as we deal with this idea of resilience, as we deal with this idea? You know, resilience is that idea that in the midst of the adverse, in the midst of the difficult, in the midst of the pain and the pressures, the sickness and the sufferings of this life, we can come back. And not only can we come back, but we can come back better than we were before. That's the idea of resilience. And so, my brothers and my sisters, I believe that Jesus, in his word, deals with us in times of pain, deals with us in times of pressure, deals with us in times of sadness and sorrow and sickness. Our God would never leave us alone during this times, and our God would never leave us in a position or predicament where we do not know how to move forward. And so in Luke chapter number 13, look at this, this beautiful text that Jesus gives to us. Luke chapter number 13, the gospel according to Luke chapter number 13, beginning at verse number 1. The Bible says, now there were some present at that time who told Jesus, look what happens. They told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifices. I want to stop right there for just a second, my brothers and sisters. I want to share with you that during this time, a horrible situation occurred in the temple, in, the, if you will, the church, in the place where they worshiped, that the government had perpetuated a horrible injustice on the people of God. And so there, while they were giving their sacrifices of turtle doves, and while they were giving their sacrifices of unblemished lambs, and while they were giving their sacrifices in the midst of that place, verse number one, Brother John, in the midst of that place, the government came in and blood was shed. The government came in and committed a horrible injustice on the people, and their blood, scholars and experts suggest, was mixed with the blood of their sacrifices. And the Bible goes on in verse number two to say, and Jesus answered, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all those other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? Stop right there. Here Jesus says, or do you think those not only who experienced, verse number four, who experienced uh, 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 evil at the hands of men, but how, those who, how, how about those who experienced a natural disaster, a building falling perhaps because of an earthquake, a building falling perhaps because of a horrible storm, a building collapsing, perhaps because of poor workmanship, but yet now a natural disaster that 18 people died in this, in this tower. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? Verse 5, he says, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Then he told a parable, a man had a fig tree growing in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for these three years now I've been coming to the tree looking for fruit on this fig tree and have found not any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? 
Sir, the man replied, leave it alone. For one more year, I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. My brothers and my sisters, I want to offer to you just a couple of quick reminders in this text as we seek to be resilient on our way to Resurrection Sunday. As we seek to be resilient during this season of Lent. As we seek to be resilient, we have to make sure, my brothers and sisters, number one, this text reminds us that we reject self-righteousness. Jesus here shares with them, please understand, there were those who died in the temple, but does that make them any more sinful than the others around? There were those who died in a, in a natural disaster when a building fell. Does that make them any worse than those around him? Jesus is basically saying, be careful about asking the question, why them? Instead, maybe you ought to ask the question, why not us? Oh, my brothers and sisters, Jesus is reminding us that God desires for us to never place ourselves above others. God requires of us to be careful about patting ourselves on the back and saying, look at them. God says, reject self-righteousness. God says, be careful about looking at others and considering them worse than yourselves. My brothers and my sisters, I won't go through all the scriptures today, but when you get an opportunity, look at Acts, uh, uh, look, at, look at Luke chapter number 18 and verses 9 through 14. I just want to lift up for you one little passage of scripture. Matthew chapter 23, I believe sums it all up. Matthew chapter number 23. And just one verse in Matthew chapter number 23, I believe Jesus helps us. Look at what he says in verse number 12 of Matthew chapter number 23. Jesus says, for whoever, hallelujah, that means you, that means me. For whoever, for those who exalt themselves will what? Will be what? Humbled, hallelujah. But those who humble themselves, those who have the appropriate uh, 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 acknowledgement of who they are, they will be exalted. I like the way uh, 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 the old King James version of verse number 12 says, it says, for whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased, and he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. The amplified version of that verse says, whoever exalts himself with a haughtiness and an empty pride shall be humbled and brought low, and whoever humbles himself, whoever has a modest opinion of himself and behaves accordingly shall be raised in honor. My brothers and sisters, what Jesus is trying to help us to understand is in the midst of a global pandemic, in the midst of economic depression, in the midst of government upheaval, in the midst of all kind of confusion in our world, what God is saying to all of us, what Jesus is saying to all of us is reject self-righteousness. Reject lifting yourself up. Make sure you have the right opinion of yourself. But not only that, my brothers and my sisters, God is reminding us here of something else. He's reminding us not only do we reject self-righteousness, but he's reminding us in this life we need to emphasize repentance. Go back and look at Luke chapter 13 one more time. Luke chapter 13 and, verse, and look at what Jesus says in this beautiful passage of Scripture to us. He says very clearly, in verse number 13, he says, oh, excuse me, in chapter number 13, he says, and verse number 2, Jesus answered, do you think that these Galeans were worse sinners than all the others because they suffered this way? I tell you no, but unless you repent, you too will all perish. Jesus says, my brothers and sisters, that repentance is the key. If you're going to be resilient, You've got to learn how to repent. Oh, I believe Jesus says it even better in Mark chapter 1. Mark chapter 1. 
Look at what Jesus says. This passage comes after Jesus has been uh, baptized by John the Baptist, and he's gone out into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights and been tempted by the devil. And then look what Mark chapter number 1, verse 14 says. It says, after John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming. That means he was preaching. That means he was teaching. That means he was showing. That means he was being an example. The Bible says proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Look what Jesus says. He says, repent and believe the good news. That word repent in the gospel uh, literally means metaneo in Greek. It literally means there must be a changing of your mind. There must be a changing of your attitude. There must be a changing of your thought process. As there is a changing of your mind, there's a changing of your heart. And as there is a changing of your heart, there then comes a changing of your behavior. If you're going to be resilient, reject self-righteousness, but learn to repent. I want to give you one other scripture here, and I'll quickly move on. Acts chapter number 26. I absolutely love the 26th chapter of the, of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Acts chapter 26. It's that passage of scripture when the Apostle Paul is testifying before Festus, and he's testifying before King Agrippa. He's testifying of his, uh, of his relationship with Jesus Christ. He's testifying of what has happened in his life. And look what he says in verse number 20. This gets me excited. He says, first to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea and to the Gentiles, I preached that they should repent and turn to God and demonstrate their repentance by their deeds. Notice what Paul says. Paul says, I was in Damascus and I was in Jerusalem and I was in Judea, all of that area. I even talked to the Gentiles, those outside of God's temple. But everywhere I went, I preached you should repent and then show your repentance by your deeds. My brothers and my sisters, Paul is sharing with us that if you're going to be resilient, if you're going to come back from the, from, the, from, the, from the issues and the problems and the pains of this life, you've got to have rejecting of self-righteousness got to have repentance. And then finally, Jesus shares with us that if you're going to have resi resilience as we make our way to Resurrection Sunday, then you must remember and rejoice because God has given you one more chance. Oh, I like it, my brothers and sisters, and I'm finished. Luke chapter number 13. Look at what Jesus says. He tells this parable, this, 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 this story that has gospel principles for us as we live. And look what he says. It says in verse number 6, he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year, and I'll dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. My beloved, I believe what Jesus is reminding us here is that we should have been cut down. <laughs> we should have been taken out. We should have been gone. But God has given me, and God has given you, just one more chance. God has blessed us. And the only reason God has blessed us is because Jesus is sitting at the right hand of God the Father, interceding on our behalf, and he's saying, let me work on them just a little bit more. Let me fertilize them just a little bit more. I know they haven't been productive. I know they haven't been fruitful. I know they haven't been all they should be. But God, give them one more chance. Can you say today God has given me one more chance? Can you, matter of fact, can you say God hadn't just given me one more chance, but God just keeps on giving me chances. Every day, God allows me to live. God has given me another chance. My brothers and sisters, I'm thankful to our God 
that if we're going to be resilient as we make our journey toward Resurrection Sunday, we've got to make sure we reject self-righteousness. We've got to repent. And then we've got to remind ourselves that God has given us the gift of today. God has given us the gift of this moment. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and let us be glad in it. My brothers and my sisters, tomorrow morning join me as we begin that 40-day journey to Resurrection Sunday. 7.30 tomorrow morning on Zoom, 7.30 tomorrow morning on the phone line, we will spend just five to ten minutes letting go and letting God, making our journey. Listen, I absolutely love you, but more importantly than my love for you, I pray that you know, I pray that you feel, I pray that you understand that God loves you. Can't wait to see you tomorrow morning. God bless you.